Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today I want to talk about one of the favorite typewriters I have in my collection. When I started collecting typewriters, I didn't know a lot. I, I still don't know a lot, but when I wanted to find a new typewriter, I would go on Facebook Marketplace, I would go to an antique store, and I would just look around and see what I thought was interesting to look at. I wasn't looking for anything particularly rare. I didn't know what kind of brands or models were out there. I was just kind of going based off of aesthetics. I have since changed my approach to typewriter collecting, but a lot of what I was doing in the early days of collecting typewriters was really going based off of the look. And I didn't know a lot. I was on Facebook Marketplace, and I ran into this typewriter posting that I thought was just gorgeous. There was something about the design of this little royal heritage that I was really attracted to. It had these weird triangle sides to it. It had a top panel that was rounded. Something about the look of this little royal heritage really fascinated me. I put that royal heritage on my list of I would like to find you someday and kind of went on with my collecting until I ran into another post for a Royal Lux typewriter. Same body design, same body style, and I was also really interested in this one, but it was outside of my price range, and my mom ended up picking up that typewriter for herself. And then I ran into this posting of a Royal Futura for about $12, and I was like, yep, that's the one. So I went and picked up this Royal Futura, and I've been in love with it ever since. So this is my Royal Futura Covey. He is in a gray color, and it's one of the most interesting typewriters in my collection. I think it looks different than everything else I've ever had, and I really wanted to look more into this range of typewriters, because as I discovered when I went to Chicago for the Type-In, there was more than just the Futura 800. Like, there were other numbers in that series. Now, in 1954, Royal combined with McBee, and a lot of their designs after that 1954 phase really started to change. And one of their designers, was a guy named Laird Fortune Covey, and he designed a lot of the outer shells for the Royal typewriters post-1954. So a lot of his designs kind of gave us that 50s and 60s typewriter feel that we have from the Royal line. There was a great departure from their Royal Dreyfus machines, which was another one of their designers that they had, and their Royal 50s styles that were in that like gray crinkle paint finish in the body design that I hate. All the machines post-Royal McBee really started to look different and look different than a lot of the other typewriters on the market. Now, Laird Fortune Covey also designed the outer shell for the Royal FP, which is a desk model machine, but he also designed and patented in 1958 the Royal Futura. Now, the Royal Futura is actually made out of aluminum to make it lighter, and mine even has a sticker on the top that talks about those aluminum body panels. The idea was that it was lighter weight. It also has a very different design than some of the square boxy shapes we were getting at typewriters around the same time period. If you look at it from a profile view, it's got these like atomic triangle shapes and then a rounded panel top front. I really like the aesthetics of this design. It's just designed to look so different than anything else out there. And again, it was designed to be a little bit lighter. Royal also decided to put tombstone shaped keys on it in that plastic that they had. So these are tombstone tombstone style keys, which were on some of their older machines as well. You might have had these on some Royal Portables that are made with glass instead of the plastic that they have on the Royal Future. Again, great for making it a little bit lighter weight. And it also had a specific typeface. Now we talked a lot about typefaces in my 101 video with Lucas from Typewriter Chicago. I'll link that down below. But Royal released their own typeface for the Futura line called Merit. And you could get the Royal Futura in Merit typefaced Pika, not Pika, I corrected myself, and Elite. And if you look at this, it's very similar to the typical style of typeface that we think of on typewriters with that serif font, but it's just a little bit different. There's a little bit of a tilt to the E. Some of the letters are shaped just slightly differently. It does look just a little bit odd, and it was on all the Futura models. Now, there were three typewriters in the Futura series. There was the Futura 800, which was like the souped up, has all the bells and whistles version. There was the Royal Futura 600, which had a few less functions, but it was still kind of middle of the road, had enough on it to be still fancy feeling. And then they had the Royal Future of 400, which was like the budget model. And to me, this reminds me a lot of the Smith Corona line from the 1950s, where they had that five series where every time you stepped up and paid a little bit more, you got some fancier functions on the machine itself. So to me, the Future line kind of feels like that five series, where as you go up the line, you get more and more functions. 
So the Royal Futura 800, which is what I have on my shelf over here, was a 44 key keyboard. So it had 44 keys. All of the other ones had less keys than that. And it also came in two colors. So the bottom panel was a different color than the top colored plate. And they came in the shades Periwinkle Blue, Meadow Green, Mist Gray, cocoa, which is kind of like a pink color, especially now they look more like a salmon-y pink color. And then you also could get the Americana version. Now I've seen one of these in person and it's kind of a tri-tone color typewriter. Super interesting to look at. But those were the color waves that came with the Royal Future 800. It also had the addition of the magic margins, the pop open top cover, which I really, really love. And it also was equipped with a twin pack, which is a special ribbon replacement that they released alongside the Future model. Below the Royal Futura 800 was the Royal Futura 600 and it had a 42 key keyboard so it was missing the one and plus sign and on the other side of the keyboard it was missing the plus and equal sign. It still had the magic margins and the Royal Futura 600 and 800 had these buttons on the front panel that were for margin settings. So you had the margin set and the clear, which was on both of those models, but the Royal Futura 600 didn't have the paper guide on the one side. And they also came in one tone colors and they only came in blue and imperial gray. No, imperial pearl gray. And then the most budget-friendly model of all was the Royal Futura 400. It only ever came in one color, which was that mist gray color. And it had a 42 key keyboard but it was missing the two margin buttons on the front panel, so you couldn't easily set margins or columns on the typewriter on the Royal Futura 400. Now, one thing that's interesting about the Royal Futuras and some of the other Royal models as well, their main selling point is this magic margin. I didn't know what a magic margin was, I had to look it up. But on my Royal Futura, it does have these two buttons across the top that are in red that say magic margin. And the idea behind the magic margin is that you can set your margins with the press of a button. So all you have to do is move your typewriter to the place where you'd like the margin to be set and hit the button and it should automatically set those margins for you. On other typewriters, you have little tabs that you can see that you have to push physically into the place where you'd like those margins to be. With the magic margins, all you have to do is press a button. It makes it seem a little bit more automatic. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the magic margin. I have trouble seeing visually where I've set my margins because they're underneath the hood. It's hard to see them. So I like being able to set my margins more manually, pushing things around, seeing where those end stoppers are. But it is a function that they heavily publicized in all of their advertising was that the Royal Futura did have these magic margins. The Royal Futura 800 and 600 also had the magic column set, which are the buttons across the front. One press of those can help you set your tabs and easily also clear your tabs, but that was not on the Royal Futura 400. And as I mentioned before, these did come with a different ribbon pack. So they got the twin pack around the same time as the Futura line and the twin pack was considered like their no mess ribbon replacement option. It was these two little squarish shaped plastic spools that you could set into your typewriter and it would protect you from ever having to physically touch the ribbon and dirty your fingers when changing out your ribbon. So the twin pack was also advertised with all of the Futura models. The same designs from the Royal Futura line were also turned into the Heritage, the Heritage Deluxe, and the Heritage 3. I don't know if there was a Heritage 2, it's, it's not in my script. But those were sold exclusively at Montgomery Ward, which was a department store. I've had a Montgomery Ward machine before, but they were designed to be a little bit less expensive because they were branded specifically for a department store. We've talked about rebranded machines or rebadged machines at department stores. The idea was you weren't paying for the name brand version, so they were a little bit cheaper. So the Heritage line and that initial first typewriter that I saw in this body style that I fell in love with were actually sold at a department store. Later in the 1960s, some of the same ideas from the Royal Futura line were applied to other models in their line. So you had the Tab Omatic, you also had the American, or the yeah, the American. And then eventually the Royal Aristocrat, which I've had experience with in the 1950s body style, got updated to a Royal Futura body style. And the Aristocrat is one of those models that was in the Royal line that kind of got updated every single time they updated the body style. So it also got updated to the Safari body style, which I've talked about before. And then eventually it also became an electric typewriter because I had one of those too. So the Aristocrat 
kind of got updated all the way along, and there is a version of the aristocrats that is in the same body style as the royal Futura. They also kind of shrunk down this body style for some of the more ultra-portable or lightweight portable designs later on in their line, including the Parade. I've seen a couple others that are just that thinner body style where they're not as deep, but they have that same idea of two-toned and triangle panels across the side, but again, less functions. You're not going to be able to fit in some of those magic column sets that you would on the Futura 800 and 600 when you only have about this much space to work with. They also designed some other Futura body variants in the Holland manufacturer for Royal. So the Royal Lux 400, 425, and 450 were all the same body style as the Royal Futura with a few differences. They didn't have that magic column and set across the top. They also didn't have the same top panel as the Royal Futura has, which is one of my favorite things. And we'll get to that in a second. You had to physically remove the top panel. It's set in there. So there wasn't a button that magically moved that for you and they also had on the external of the body in the sides your tab and clear which was a plus sign and negative sign on the side which to me has never read as a tab button it's always read as like tension because there's a plus and a minus on it but that was actually your tab set and then on the other side you would have the color changing selector so you could select different colors but on the royal futura body those were all underneath the hood I went back and compared the two typefaces that I had from that type test I had done between the Futura 800 and the Royal X425, and I realized that the 425 must have a different typeface to it because I know the Futuras have merit, they have that tilted E, some of the letters look a little bit different. The 425 has a more traditional, almost courier style typeface. So the 425s, while they have a similar body shape, their construction inside is different, and they also don't have the same typeface that you would find on the Royal Futura line. One of my favorite things on the Royal Futura is that it has this button on the front that instantly opens the top. So it's spring loaded, you press the badge on the front and it opens the top of the typewriter. I love it, it's so satisfying, I think it's so clever and it's one of the things I love most about the Royal Futura. Now that wasn't on the Royal Lux typewriter so I was kind of disappointed that that wasn't there but the Royal Futura 800, 600 and 400 all have this pop open top button. I love it, I could sit there doing it all day. But conspiracy here, when I got a 1958 Golden Underwood Deluxe Machine, I also noticed that you could press the button on the front, which was their logo, and it would open the top. Now it wasn't spring loaded, but it did kind of release the top cover. And I always thought in the back of my brain, oh, isn't that interesting? They stole that from the Royal Futura. However, the Royal Futura patent wasn't filed until 1958, and both my Underwood Deluxes were from 1958. So, it kind of seems like Laird Fortune Covey had taken some of those ideas from other machines at the time and put them in the Royal Futura body, and in interviews he had mentioned that he was inspired by some of the machines in the Underwood line. So all this time I'd been kind of dogging Underwood for taking this idea from the Futura, but in reality, he had taken that idea of the push button front and put that on the Futura. However, I really prefer that on the Futura it's spring loaded. It just is more fun to keep pressing over and over and over again. Now, I really enjoy typing on the Royal Futura. Not only do I love the push button front because it's amazing, I also like the keys on this specifically. Even though I have trouble with some of the other keys in the Royal line, I like the tombstone design on these. I enjoy using this machine. I think it's light-ish weight. I mean, it's 22 pounds, just like the rest of the typewriters I have, because it's, you know, made of metal. But I do really enjoy typing on this machine. So here's a quick little type test. The Futura has my heart. I don't know why, I can't explain it, but there's something about the body design of this machine that looks so different from everything else I have in my collection. I love the functionality of the Smith Corona series. The 5 Series has my heart as like overall best typewriters in my experience. I think they're easy to work on. They've been so consistent for me and I really love using them. But there's something about the Royal Futura specifically that makes it my favorite out of the entire Royal line of typewriters. They have have a color variety, they have variety in price points and functions, and they have some really cool fun details to them like that push button front and their own specific typeface that I think makes them a really interesting machine out of the Royal line and one of my favorite typewriters. I've had a Covey since 
the beginning. I've really always enjoyed this machine. I got him for $12. He was just perfect when I got him and I've always loved using it. Have never had a problem with it. It was clean when I got it. So it's one of those typewriters that I had such a positive experience with. And now every time I go on Facebook Marketplace, I'm looking for machines that give me that same feeling and that look very similar to him. And at the moment, I'm eyeing a royal aristocrat in the same body style, even though I hate the royal aristocrat. If you're interested in some of the videos I talked about today, I've linked all of them down below. I encourage you to check out my previous Royal videos and also that typeface video I did with Typewriter Chicago where we talk about Merit Typeface. If you're interested in other typewriter content, I do have some other videos on this YouTube channel as well as on Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching and remind you, you're just my type writer. So I was filming last weekend and my upstairs neighbors were moving out. I have had two sets of upstairs neighbors in the last eight months. I'm beginning to think it's me.